In this video, we will walk through the basic steps for configuring a SonicWall Gen 7 firewall as the local connector for Cloud Secure Edge. Before we begin, there are a few prerequisites for this type of deployment. The first is that the firewall must be running Sonic OS 7.1.2 or newer firmware. The second is that the firewall and the CSE instance must reside in the same MySonicWall tenant. And the last is the firewall must be running in global mode, as the connector is not supported in SonicWall firewalls running policy mode. This includes the NSSP 15700 and NSV virtual firewalls that have been deployed in policy mode. We'll start by confirming that the firewall and the CSE instance are in the same MySonicWall tenant by logging into MySonicWall.com and checking the tenant. As we can see here, both the CSE instance and the TZ80 firewall are in the same tenant. Now, unlike configuring a Linux window or virtual appliance connector, most of the configuration for the firewall connector is done on the firewall itself instead of the CSE console. So let's log into the firewall. From the system dashboard page, we can see that the firewall is running Sonic OS 8, which is newer than 7.1.2 and is compatible with the connector. We will then click the network settings from the top menu, then Cloud Secure Edge from the left side menu, then access settings under Cloud Secure Edge. Because it takes some time to provision the connector, Cloud Secure Edge connectivity has already been enabled on the firewall, and the green check mark indicates that the connector is ready for configuration. Next, we will click the Connectors tab. We can see the connector is present, but it's not yet enabled. Click the pencil in the Configure column to configure the IP addresses and domains that will be accessed through this connector. The first section is configuring the IP addresses. You can either click the plus symbol to add a new address object or click the pencil to configure an existing object. For this tutorial, we will configure an existing address object. We'll click the pencil now on the window, the existing network objects are on the left and the configured networks are on the right. We will select an address object from the left side menu. For this demo, we will click X2 subnet and then click the triangle pointing right. You can now see that the X2 subnet appears on the right side, meaning it is going to be added to the connector configuration. We can then click save. We will now click the Domains tab to configure any domains that might be hosted behind this connector. So we'll go ahead and click Add. From here we will configure the domain name, then the IP address of the server where that domain can be resolved, and the local interface where that DNS server can be accessed. Then click Save. Now that the IP addresses and domains have been configured, we can click the X on the top right hand corner of the configure connector window and then enable the connector by clicking the toggle. A pop up will appear to confirm that you want to enable the connector. Click OK. For good measure, I always click the synchronize button to ensure that the changes have been synchronized with the Cloud Secure Edge service. You can see that in the status column, there's a green check mark, and when you hover over, it says no error encountered, meaning that the CSE connector has been configured and the configuration has been synchronized with the Cloud Secure Edge service. Click status, and this will confirm that the firewall connector is connected to all of the Cloud Secure Edge servers globally. A green check mark on the right side means that the firewall is in fact connected to those servers. So what we can do now is log in to the Cloud Secure Edge console and confirm that the configuration matches what we configured on the firewall. So from the Cloud Secure Edge console, we will click Networks on the left-hand side, and we can see that the TZ80 connector is configured and reporting. Click the name of the connector to confirm that the configuration matches what we did on the firewall. Please note that the pencil icon to edit the connector is not displayed and the trash can icon to delete the connector is grayed out. This is because with the firewall connector, all of that configuration is done on the firewall itself and not here in the Cloud Secure Edge console. If all the information on this page looks correct, then the connector configuration is complete and it can be added to a service tunnel so remote users can access the local resources through this connector. Please refer to the remote access via service tunnel tutorial for the basic configuration steps of a service tunnel.